Okay, moving on now from act utilitarianism, we're going to move on into rule utilitarianism for A level RS. So, a few key facts. It's the same sort of format that I went through in the last video for act utilitarianism. I'm going to tell you some key facts at the start, which will go into your AO1 answers. So, this time it is founded by uh, John Stuart Mill, and it's based on eudaimonism, where before it was both uh, based on hedonism, we're now basing it on eudaimonism, and it's linked to hedonism. It's a teleological theory, uh, follows norm normative ethics, and it consists of, I think, four things. The greatest happiness principle, it's a mouthful, but it is spelt right, don't worry, universalisability, and the ideas of higher and lower pleasures, or the quantity of pleasures, and uh, guidelines. It's called rule utilitarianism. <clears throat> Sorry, it's called rule utilitarianism because there are now a few rules in play. A uh, few key facts for John Stuart Mill now. He uh, lived from 1806 to 1873. He was Jeremy Bentham's godson. And uh, like before, we're going to refer to him as a British ethicist. He was also a bit of a philosopher, but we're going to call him an ethicist because we're doing ethics. That's as much as I could uh, seem to find, unfortunately, about, about him, um, his life in general. He did write a book that I'm going to talk about, uh, that I'm going to mention later. But, like I say, these videos aren't going to cover everything you need to know. They're just the core basics. So you are going to be doing your own revision outside of these as well. So, um, sort of mentioned this in the last video, but I kind of need to clarify them again for you. Because um, uh, one or two things have changed for this video. Uh, what does teleological normative hedonism and eudaimonism mean. Teleological uh, is a theory or an ethic where good or bad is based on the outcome of an action. Normative is a branch of ethics that concerns how we ought to act. And hedonism is the ancient Greek view that pleasure is the highest good. Now before I was uh, telling you that this was uh, central to act utilitarianism and this one, eudaimonism, is um, more on the uh, side of rule utilitarianism, which is obviously what we're doing now. Now, I did also say in the last video that there was a bit more to eudaimonism than just saying that it's a later view uh, that happiness is the highest good, um, uh, as opposed to pleasure. But it is more or less um, what you need to know because um, John Stuart Mill sort of replaced Gen uh, Bentham's idea of pleasure with happiness. So, what is rule utilitarianism made of? Great happiness principle, as we just said now, pleasure is now replaced with happiness. Uh, as opposed to uh, where Bentham was talking about pleasure being the highest good, we are now saying that happiness is the highest good. We're still putting into play the idea of greatest good for the greatest number. So um, this whole idea of basically if you have um, uh, an opinion that, uh, by three people and an opinion of one person, and you've been told which one is to be put forward, you're going to go for the uh, for this lot over here because they um, are the, the greatest number and uh, therefore they're going to get the greatest good out of it. Now this is the quote that you want to use from John Stuart Mill when talking about the greatest happiness principle it is that the greatest happiness principle holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. And there's another one here, by happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain by unhappiness, pain, and the privation of pleasure. I personally would go for the first one because there's a lot more reference to happiness, which is sort of what Mill was um, was doing. He was sort of stressing the importance of happiness over pleasure. So moving on now to universalisability, a big word. This basically is saying that the rules apply to everyone to bring happiness to everyone. Now the rules <clears throat> we'll talk about a bit later with the idea of there being guidelines in life now as opposed to where in act utilitarianism the individual was sort of left to decide what to do. Now in real utilitarianism there's a bit less of that freedom and you are to follow overarching rules. And the quote that um, is best to use here now from Mill is that each person's happiness is a good to that person and the general happiness therefore is a good to the aggregate of all persons. Again showing how everyone must follow um, these rules in order to achieve happiness with everyone. There is also the idea of higher and lower pleasures now. So essentially, um, Mill disagreed with Bentham's quote, all things being equal, Pushman is equal to poetry. He said that basically, 
um, well, here is the quote, that you can use some kinds of pleasure are more desirable and more valuable than others. And uh, an example is what I've got here. There's a chap here reading, uh, reading some poems, and there's a guy here probably watching a film or something on the computer or just having a bit of leisurely time on the computer. Now, Mill would argue that the chap over here reading poetry um, is, um, is of the higher pleasures of life, and this guy is of the lower pleasures. Lower pleasures being things like um, leisurely activities, um, food, and um, etc. So, um, higher pleasures being things like reading poetry, viewing art, etc. And uh, obviously there's his famous quote there, it is better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. And now we're going to move on to the idea of guidelines. So rule utilitarianism is called rule utilitarianism because rules are now in play. And uh, a quote from a textbook here, by the way, this isn't um, from a scholarly reference, so I wouldn't use it in the exam if I were you, but it focuses on general rules, it being rule utilitarianism. So rule utilitarianism focuses on general rules that everyone should follow to bring about the greatest good for that community. And therefore you must obey a rule even if it doesn't lead to the greatest pleasure for that person in the situation, because it will bring pleasure to the greater, uh, for the community. And the quote that you want to use from uh, Mill now is that a party of order and stability are necessary elements of a healthy state of political life. That took a while to try and find. It may, uh, depending on the context that um, you're writing in before you use that quote, may not work. So be careful how you how you word it when using that one. It was... It was quite a rare one to come across. Uh, yes, and also with the ideas of rules, the sort of type of rules that we're dealing with here are like, um, in the UK at least, always drive on the left, or the idea of never lie. Things that are, aren't going to benefit the community if everyone starts disobeying that particular rule. So, uh, AO1 facts for you now, for your 30 mark question. Uh, he wrote a book called On Liberty. Definitely do your own revision into that. That, that book is... Um, essentially um, Jeremy Bentham's, um, it, it, it's similar to the, book, to the book that Bentham wrote in terms of it got him famous, um, I forget the name of the book, The Principles of Morals and Legislation, that was it. So where Bentham wrote The Principles of Morals and Legislation, uh, John Stuart Mill wrote this book on liberty. Uh, I've said that, I've said that, I've said that, I've said that. Yes, just, uh, just a reminder again, he stressed the importance of happiness over pleasure. And he defined pleasure in a way of um, sort of almost calling it quite selfish. It's about gratification and uh, its instrumental worth, whereas happiness is satisfaction. It has a positive ripple effect on its intrinsic worth. Uh, that there is a picture of the book um, on liberty. So, um, I've done it again, I haven't formatted that right, sorry. Right, okay, so um, uh, more facts and so on. Uh, yeah, now I'm pushed for time, so I'm not going to take you through these, but please, please follow the link that I'm about to give you now. That will take you to the video that I had before, um, where I actually explained this in a bit more detail. Please, please follow that link now. Okay, so hopefully you just followed the link and have come back to the video now. So we're going to look at the problems um, of AO2, um, covering AO2, so a few problems with Mills utilitarianism now. We have R. M. Hare's lying shopkeeper. He is a very good example. Now, if we remember before, where we were talking about, where is it? Yes, here with the rules that these the sort of rules that if you if you break, then it's not benefiting the community much. One of them is never lie. Obviously, that's not going to benefit the community if you're lying, and particularly to the idol of a shopkeeper. He's like sort of supposed to be next to like a pope, perhaps. Uh, sorry, pope. Um, Next to like the uh, the local vicar, perhaps the shopkeeper is sort of like the um, uh, the village icon in a way, and it wouldn't be a good thing if uh, people were to start, or, or if a shopkeeper at least would start to lie to his daily customers that all live in the same community, most likely. So the big problem here is Iron Hair's lying shopkeeper example, where a madman walks in with a gun and asks, "Where is my um, you know, where is my victim?" and the shopkeeper has the victim hidden in the back room, if he is never to lie, then he is obviously to say the victim's in the back room. He's going to go into the back room and kill the victim because he's a madman with a gun. That is obviously a problem. Uh, and you also have William Hazlitt. He's a personal favourite of mine. He had this quote that's a good one to use. Rules and models destroy genius and art. So this is sort of 
showing how some some geniuses sort of think outside the box of rules and and, and the norm and so on. And if you're going to constrict uh, people with those rules, then it's just going to lower the likelihood of um, geniuses coming out and so on. So that is the core basics of everything you need to know. Again, remember to do your own revision, um, and I shall see you again soon.